Our next notion is to look at <clears throat> the unit circle. This is a circle whose radius is one. So this is any circle whose radius is one. And what we're going to require is, this is a circle centered at the origin of radius one. So we know that the circle centered at the origin of radius one, so if the center is the origin and the radius is one, then we can draw a picture of the circle we're discussing. It becomes a very important notion. And so what I have here, let's approximate that. That's my circle, center at the origin, and the radius is one. So if I put the coordinate axis on here, then I have a circle, again, radius is one. So I know what the coordinates are of that individual point. This distance is one. And so the coordinates of that point are one comma zero. So the coordinates of that point are one comma zero. The coordinates of this point, horizontally we go zero, vertically we go up one. So this is zero comma one. And then we know the coordinates of this point. This, this, this is the value, this coordinate is negative one, comma, the y value is zero. And then finally, the point here, the coordinates are, the x coordinate is zero, and the y coordinate, the y coordinate is negative one. Now, it should not be very hard to see several facts now come into play that are, I think, should be pretty obvious. The first, what is the largest possible, what is the largest possible x coordinate for this point? If I choose this point at random on the unit circle, the x coordinate of that point is this distance, which is not as much as this one. So if I choose this point on the unit circle, it determines an x coordinate that is this long. However, if I choose an x coordinate on the unit circle here, it determines an x coordinate this long. What is the longest possible choice I can make for the x coordinate? Well, depending upon where this point falls on the x on the circle, if I choose the point to be 1, 0, that then is the largest possible x coordinate. So the largest possible x coordinate is in fact 1, and by the same argument on the other side of the picture, the smallest possible x coordinate is negative 1. Similarly, the largest possible y coordinate is positive 1. The largest possible, I'm sorry, the smallest possible y coordinate is negative 1. So the x coordinates range from negative 1 to positive 1. The y coordinates range from negative 1 to positive 1. All right? So that all that comes straight from the fact, just immediately we have this, and there's going to be quite a bit more coming straight from the fact that this is the unit circle. Now, we remember from our glory days in basic algebra, we know the equation of this circle. We know the equation of this circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 squared. That is to say, if I choose any point, if I choose any point that lies on this unit circle, then that point has an x coordinate, that point has a y coordinate, Here's the x-coordinate, there's the y-coordinate, that's equal to this hypotenuse, which must be 1. And so we remember from our, our basic work in basic algebra that, that the equation, the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, let's <clears throat> take this notion and marry it to the x, y, r definitions. So let us suppose that t... T is an angle in standard position, any angle in standard position. And you can choose this to be any angle we like. I'm going to just randomly select, let's suppose we have this angle in standard position, and I'm going to, let's say, choose it to be this angle in quadrant two. So this is my angle. Now, I don't want to call it angle X because 
X would then represent this angle, but then X is also representing this value on the X axis. I don't want the same letter representing two different quantities. So I'm going to represent this angle, and I don't want to use theta again because I don't want to get too much stuff going on here. I'm going to call this angle T. Now the textbook calls it S. I tend not to use S because my S's tend to look like fives and vice versa. And so I'm going to not use S. I'm going to use T, the, the Latin letter T, to represent my, uh, my angle size. All right? Now, by, even by labeling this angle at T, that already gives us a lot of information, a lot of detail, and a lot of understanding that we're going to need to bring to bear to this problem. All we've done is taken an angle and placed it in standard position. That's one of the minimum uh, pieces of our skill set that we've developed in trigonometry. Now, one thing to, that's very important for this process, this is the unit circle. This distance is known to be one. It is the unit circle. That is to say, the radius of the circle is one. In this picture, in this picture, the radius, r, is equal to 1. And so that tells us what we can do with our x, y, r definitions. As soon as I choose t to be an angle in standard position, any angle in standard position automatically determines a point which lies on the unit circle. If I take any angle in standard position, place it in standard position, the terminal side will pass through a point on the unit circle. This point on the unit circle will automatically, if I drop a perpendicular, that point on the unit circle determines this distance. It will determine that distance which is an x-coordinate. Now, in this particular case, my x-value happens to be a negative number. The reason my x-value is a negative number is because, coincidentally, uh, it's three or four minutes ago, I randomly chose angle t to be a quadrant 2 angle. It doesn't need to be. It could be any quadrant angle. And so this is my angle t. That determines x. Now, in this particular case, we know that x is a negative number is a negative number, right? And that also determines this y-coordinate. Any point on the unit circle determines an x value and a y value. That's why I don't want to use x. I don't want to say sine of x and cosine of x because there would be too many x's flying around. I want to say sign of this angle T. This angle T in standard position is T. That angle T determines this length X, which we know to be a negative number. It determines this vertical distance Y. And we know, since this is in quadrant two, that determines that to be a positive number. So this is a positive number. Let's assume something. Let's assume that I had chosen T to be a quadrant three angle. Then the X coordinate, this X coordinate would have been a negative number. The Y coordinate would also have been a negative number. In quadrant three, any, val any point that lies in quadrant three, the X coordinate is negative and the Y coordinate is negative. But in quadrant two, the X coordinate is negative and the Y coordinate is positive. If I had randomly, way back when, when we first started working this little example here, the first time I introduced my purple angle, if it had been a quadrant four angle, then the X coordinate would have been positive and the Y coordinate would have been negative. And so what we have now is this. If I choose a point in standard position that determines this point, which defines the value for x and finds the value for y. So we have an x, we have a y, and we have a radius. Because this is known to be the unit circle, 
that radius value must be one. And so we have the X value is whatever X value we get from our problem. We have the Y value is whatever Y value we get from the problem, but R is equal to one. So if, and this is a huge if, if the point in question is on the unit circle, then the value of sine simplifies. Yes, sine of t is y over r, but if it's the unit circle, that value is equal to 1. Cosine of t is x over r, but if it's the unit circle, that value is equal to 1. And so what we have then is this. For the unit circle... For the unit circle, sine of t is just y divided by 1. It is the y coordinate. Cosine of t is x over r, but r is equal to 1. That is the x coordinate. Tangent of t is the same. There's no change here because this does not involve r. This is y over x. Cotangent, there's no change with the cotangent statement because there is no statement of r in the cotangent definition. So this remains x over y with no change. But there is going to be a change with secant. Secant, secant r is equal to 1, so this is 1 over the x value. And then finally, cosecant is 1 over the y value. So if, and the thing is, very often we will be using the unit circle. It is one of the most basic fundamental tools is the unit circle. For the unit circle, the x, y, r definitions greatly simplify. For the x, y, r definitions, if, 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 if this is the unit circle, now, if it's not the unit circle, you're back with the x, y, r, because if it's not the unit circle, r is not equal to 1, which means this doesn't simplify like we just did. If it's the unit circle, then sine is the y coordinate, cosine is the x coordinate, and so on down the scale. These are the really, really big statements. Now, the others are true. They come into play. You do use them. But these two are huge. These are really gigantic. Because here's what this means. Here is what this means. This, if you're going to make a red circle around something and make a couple stars in your notes, get ready to do it right here because this is really huge. This is gigantic. I cannot tell you how many times in the next couple semesters you will be using this fact. This fact that I tell you right now. So, if this is the unit circle, if this is the unit circle, is that showing up okay? I'm going to switch to my purple marker because I'm running out of juice here. So, if this is the unit circle, then you choose any point anywhere on the unit circle. I'm going to choose it to be, I'm going to choose it to be quadrant three. This is a point I've chosen to be on the unit circle. Choose any point on the unit circle. Draw from it the standard position angle theta. Any point on the unit circle determines such an angle. The coordinates of that point are cosine, if I call this, uh, let's call it t instead of theta. This is t. The coordinates of that point Yes, the coordinates are x, comma, y. But yeah, we can do better than that. Because x is cosine t. Every time you hit cosine button on your calculator, it is telling you the y coordinate of a point that lies on the unit circle corresponding to the angle that you're working with. And so... Cosine is the x coordinate. So if this is a point on the unit circle, yeah, we could call it x comma y, but it's much more efficient and much, much better for many of the concerns we'll be dealing with. This is cosine of t comma 
sine of t. Why is that? Because cosine of t is the x-coordinate on the unit circle because r is equal to 1. Sine of t is the y-coordinate on the unit circle because r is equal to 1. If a point lies on the unit circle, then two things are true. A point that lies on the unit circle. So I'm going to make another one here using my black marker. Suppose I choose a point down here, uh, up here in quadrant one. So that point determines now this black angle in quadrant one. This is now, let's call this T number two. This was T number one. This is T number two. Then what are the coordinates of that point? The coordinates of that point are cosine of T number two, comma, sine of T number two. What does that mean? It means if you drop this perpendicular, that is the y coordinate. That is the sine of that angle. If you drop that perpendicular, this is the x coordinate. That distance is cosine of T2. It is not possible to overstate the importance of that piece of information. In fact, this picture has got a little bit too busy. This is so important. I'm going to redraw this entire notion. I'm going to redraw this, and I'm going to put everything in quadrant one, just so you can see what it looks like. This is true in any of the four quadrants. So, let's suppose this is quadrant one. This is the unit circle. Now, how do we indicate that's the unit circle? The simplest way to indicate the unit circle is to make this point one comma zero. Well, if that's one, then that's got to be one. All the radii are one. So as soon as you label this as one comma zero, that fixes this to be a piece of the unit circle. If I choose any point that lies on here, any point on here, Drop the perpen now that uh, uh, sorry make the basic make the angle in standard position that's my angle t. If I drop this perpendicular, that determines an x coordinate. That determines a y coordinate. What are the coordinates of that point? Well, the x coordinate is cosine of the angle. The y coordinate is sine of the angle. So this x-coordinate is cosine of the t angle. This y-coordinate is sine of the angle t. And so the coordinates of this point are cosine t, comma, sine t. There are some specific places I've, when I've taught calculus, and this happens in calculus one, it happens in calculus two. I think there's a place, mm, I can't remember, but I think it happens in calc three also, where the key to understanding what's happening is simply, well, what, is, what are the coordinates? I'll ask a student, what are the coordinates of a point that lies on the unit circle? And, and they look at me like they, I just asked them, you know, what, what's it like to live on Mars or something? The key to many, many problems is this. If a point lies on the unit circle, I'll say for the 15th time now, if a point lies on the unit circle, the coordinates of that point are cosine t, sine t, where t is the standard position angle. This is true of all the quadrants. This is true of uh, being on the axes. This is true of any point that lies on the unit circle. And so we can do any point that lies on the unit circle. That's true in this picture. We can do as many different scenarios as we want to consider. They are all true because it's always the same notion. If I take the unit circle and take any point that lies on the unit circle. Let's take one down here in quadrant four. Right? Make the angle in standard position. Now, I'm not talking about this angle. I'm talking about the angle in standard position. Then drop this perpendicular. What are the coordinates of that point? The coordinates are cosine of t, where t is this angle, sine 
T and this matches up perfectly with something we already know. We already know We already know what the signum, remember the signum is the positive negative. Why do we say signum? We say signum because if you say sine, we don't know if you're talking about S-I-N-E or S-I-G-N. And so whenever, once again, whenever we say the word signum, signum, the word signum means S-I-G-N. And so, this tells us the signum, the positive negative, of the functions in the various quadrants. Now look, when I say this is cos and t, comma, sine t, the x-coordinate is cosine. This coordinate is cosine of t. That is a positive number because this is positive 1. This is negative 1. This is a positive number. And sure enough, if a if a if a, an angle is a quadrant four angle, sure enough, the cosine is positive. This y coordinate is sine of t, and yes, that value is a negative number. Does that match up? Yes. Sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. It's negative in quadrant four, and sure enough, sine in quadrant four is a negative number. Everything dovetails together because everything, everything we've done so far, everything we ever will do stems from the same X, Y, R definitions. It's an, it's an indication of how powerful, how much information is contained in those X, Y, R definitions that all of this information and much, much, much more is contained in those simple little definitions. All right? Now, the last piece, and then we'll get out of this mess, is this. We know this is the unit circle. So that means x squared. Eh, eh. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. It's the unit circle. What that means is any point that lies on the unit circle... If you plug the x-coordinate here and square it and add the y-coordinate here and square it, you get 1. Well, that is a point on the unit circle. And so if I plug in the x-coordinate and square it and the y-coordinate and square it, I should get 1. What is the x-coordinate? The x-coordinate is cosine of t. Right? That's the x-coordinate squared. Plus, and now you can kind of see where this is going, can't you? What is the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate is sine of t. So, sine of t squared. x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. If you take any angle, any angle you want to take, Find the cosine, find the sine in your calculator. You square the sine value, oh, sorry, sorry, you square the cosine value, you square the sine value, add them together, it will always perfectly equal one. Not approximately, it's exactly, precisely equal to one. This is called the fundamental Pythagorean identity. An identity in mathematics means a statement which is true all the time. It means more than that, but for our purposes, that's sufficient. An identity is a statement that is true all the time. This is true all the time. It's called an identity because it's true all the time. It's called Pythagorean because it has to do with the Pythagorean theorem. Duh and is called fundamental because it's of fundamental importance. So it's almost like a self-defining term. The fundamental Pythagorean identity is this, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. Now, this, is so, this has happened so often that this way I've written it becomes very cumbersome. And we'll end with this. There is a shorthand for this. 
Anyone who knows what you're talking about knows how to do this. If they don't know what this means, they don't know what you're talking about in the first place. Instead of writing cosine of t and the whole thing squared, what we write, this is shorthand, we write, oh, sorry, that, that, cosine, cosine squared of t. This is cosine squared of t. It means that. Later on in the course, you'll be dealing with cosine to the, you might, you might be dealing later on with cosine of t to the fifth. You can write that as shorthand form, cosine to the fifth t. There are some places in calculus where you deal with tangent of t to the fourth power. You can rewrite that as tangent to the fourth power t. So it's, it's just a shorthand way of writing it. So it saves a little of this messy writing. It's a little bit more concise. Again, anyone who knows what you're talking about knows what this means. Anyone who's been this far in a trigonometry course knows this. And so this is cosine squared plus this becomes sine squared is equal to 1. So you may use this. Some people, and, it do, and this is more a style thing than anything else, some people prefer to rearrange this. Some people prefer to put sine first and cosine second. It does not matter. But you'll very often see this written, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And it doesn't matter what variable we pick. We could say sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. We could say sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha is equal to 1. We can say sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. It doesn't matter what variable we pick. Now, they must be the same. If I have sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of beta, that does not equal 1 unless alpha and beta are the same thing. So it is the, the, al, the uh, angles must be the same. So with that proviso, this is true for any angle we care to put in. This is the fundamental Pythagorean identity. If you had a dime for every time you're going to use this, suppose you go through the calculus 3 uh, uh, sequence. If you had a dime for every time you're going to be using this or something like it in the next three or four semesters, you would end up having, you'd have, you'd have hundreds of dollars. You can't swing anything through a, the calculus course without, without hitting this fundamental identity. We're going to be using it over and over this semester. Over and over, you'll use it in pre-calculus, in Calc 1, Calc 2, all the calculus sequence. This is absolutely bedrock. And so what we're saying is any point anywhere on the unit circle that determines an angle, that determines an x value, that determines a y value. The x value is cosine, the y value is sine. If this is not the unit circle, then the statement I just made is false. If it is the unit circle, it doesn't matter what point we choose. We can choose this point. Then the x coordinate is the cosine value. The y coordinate is the sine value. And from that, we get this fundamental identity, and this needs to go into, it doesn't matter which one of these forms you pick, but this needs to go into your forever memory, forevermore. There it is.